Let's continue our series on anomaly detection by looking at some statistical approaches to anomaly detection. One of the original statistical methods are z-scores. So let's answer the question, what are z-scores? When it comes to basic anomaly detection, statistical methods can be used to look for anomalous observations. A lot of times we start by looking one variable at a time to help identify anomalous transactions or people from the perspective of that variable. Of course, if we're looking for anomalies in a variable, we first need to know what we expect that variable to look like. And that is where z-scores come in. Z-scores are typical calculations with normal, or Gaussian, distributions. The z-score of an observation is just the observation itself, we'll call that x, minus the average of that variable across all observations, divided by the standard deviation of that variable across all observations. Essentially, the z-score just measures how many standard deviations each point is from the average. Using the normal, or Gaussian, distribution, we have the following property called the empirical rule. The empirical rule just states that approximately 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the average, approximately 95% of the data is within two standard deviations, and approximately 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations. So, when looking at z-scores, which remember, summarize how many standard deviations a point is from the average, we think of anomalies happening three or more standard deviations away from that average. So here's an example with some real data. You have a histogram of real observations here for a single variable. The variable values are on the x-axis, while the count of observations is on the y-axis. So you can see our data looks approximately normal with a large number of observations in the middle and fewer and fewer observations when the values get further from the average. Speaking of average, for this data, the average is 13 with a standard deviation of five. If we were to look three standard deviations above and below 13, we would get the range you see here. Doesn't look like there are any anomalies in our variable based on the z-score, wonderful. I know what you're thinking. What if we had some anomalies? Well, here are five anomalies across those three little bars on the right. So you'd think, hey, these are outside the range we specified. So that's how we find anomalies, right? Wrong, no, sorry, I, I feel bad. I feel like I sprung that on you unexpectedly. But there is a problem with this line of logic. You see, z-scores are calculated with the average and the standard deviation as part of the equation. Unfortunately, both of these are bothered by anomalies or outliers. Let me show you what I mean. The original range I showed you was what was calculated without those five anomalies on the right-hand side. However, if you already knew ahead of time what the anomalies in your data were, then why are you doing anomaly detection in the first place? In reality, you are looking at data and trying to see if anomalies exist. Therefore, those anomalies will be in the calculation of the z-score. Once we add those points into the calculations, things change. The average is now 15 instead of 13, and the standard deviation is now eight instead of five. This moves our range and makes it wider. Now our range actually covers three of the five anomalies. So we would only think two things look weird here. This is a problem. Luckily, people have already worked on this problem for a number of years. In fact, there's an entire branch of statistics called robust statistics. Here, people look at different techniques that can answer similar problems posed by original statistical methods, but now that can, hopefully, work in the presence of anomalies. A good robust technique should actually work in all situations, when there are outliers or anomalies, and when there are not any outliers or anomalies. This leads to the creation of the robust version of the z-score. In this robust version, we don't use the average as our measure of center, but instead we use the median. Also, instead of using the standard deviation, we use the median absolute deviation. You can think about the median absolute deviation as basically the median of absolute differences between every data point and the median. The median absolute deviation also has an adjustment factor to adjust for the shape of your distribution. For example, the value of this factor for the normal distribution is 1.48. Let's just use that as we recalculate the z-score for our data with the new robust version. Ah, now our median is 14, which is closer to the actual middle, and the median absolute deviation is 4.5 instead of the standard deviation of eight. Notice how this new robust version of the z-score, we look at three absolute median deviations away from the median, yep, still three, and we finally see those five anomalies. Good, looks like we found those outliers. So what are z-scores? 
Those are Z-scores and their robust version, which is probably better for anomaly detection, in under five minutes.